Russian servicemen have released a video showing that they are preparing to evacuate the bodies of their fellow soldiers killed in the battle. The invaders, who said that they were going to evacuate ten dead bodies in total, revealed that they had to use an unusable passenger car for this. It seems that the Zigili car used by the Russian military has no doors and is dangerous to drive. Moreover, after the battle, the destroyed armored fighting equipment belonging to the Russian army can be seen in the area. Вот наша боевая тачка его. Ахай, ебать. Вот двухсотый грузим. Сегодня десять собрали его. Всем привет. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday launched a massive exercise of the country's nuclear forces featuring practice missile launches as he continued to flex the country's nuclear muscle amid spiraling tensions with the West over Ukraine. Speaking in a video call with military leaders, Putin said that the drills will simulate top officials' action in using nuclear weapons and include practice launches of nuclear-capable ballistic and cruise missiles. Putin, who has repeatedly brandished the nuclear sword as he seeks to deter the West from ramping up support for Ukraine, emphasized on Tuesday that Russia's nuclear arsenal remains a reliable guarantor of the country's sovereignty and security. Taking into account growing geopolitical tensions and emerging new threats and risks, it's important for us to have modern strategic forces that are always ready for combat, he said, reaffirming that Russia sees nuclear weapons use as the ultimate extreme measure of ensuring its security. Putin noted that Moscow will continue to modernize its nuclear forces, deploying new missiles that have a higher precision, quicker launch times and increased capabilities to overcome missile defenses. Last month, the Russian leader warned the US and NATO allies that allowing Ukraine to use Western-supplied longer-range weapons for strikes deep inside Russia would put NATO at war with his country. He reinforced the message by announcing a new version of the nuclear doctrine that considers a conventional attack on Russia by a non-nuclear nation that is supported by a nuclear power to be a joint attack on his country, a clear warning to the US and other allies of Kiev. Putin also declared the revised document envisages possible nuclear weapons use in case of a massive air attack, holding the door open to a potential nuclear response to any aerial assault, an ambiguity intended to deter the West. Сегодня мы проводим очередную тренировку стратегических сил сдерживания. Отработаем действия должностных лиц по управлению применением ядерного оружия с практическими пусками баллистических и крылатых ракет. Сразу отмечу, что Россия подтверждает свою принципиальную позицию о том, что использование ядерного оружия является крайней исключительной мерой обеспечения безопасности государства. Вместе с тем, мы хорошо понимаем, что именно ядерная триада продолжает оставаться надежным гарантом суверенитета и безопасности нашей страны, позволяет решать задачи стратегического сдерживания, а также поддерживать ядерный паритет и баланс сил в мире как объективные факторы глобальной стабильности. Учитывая рост геополитической напряженности, появление новых внешних угроз и рисков, важно иметь современные и постоянно готовые к боевому применению стратегические силы. Будем и дальше совершенствовать все их компоненты. Ресурсы для этого имеются. Подчеркну, мы не собираемся втягиваться в новую гонку вооружений, однако будем поддерживать ядерные силы на уровне необходимой достаточности. В текущем году их оснащенность с 
современными образцами вооружения достигло порядка 94%. В соответствии с госпрограммой вооружения будем планомерно переводить РВСН на новые ракетные комплексы стационарного и мобильного базирования, которые по сравнению с предыдущими поколениями обладают более высокой точностью, сокращенным временем подготовки к пуску. И что крайне важно, повышенными возможностями по преодолению систем противоракетной обороны. Кроме того, продолжается ввод в состав военно-морского флота новейших атомных подводных крейсеров, а также модернизация стратегических бомбардировщиков дальней авиации. Все это необходимо для эффективной защиты России и наших граждан. For saboteurs were killed while attempting to infiltrate Russia's borderline Bryansk region, the Federal Security Service said. On October 27th, officers of the Russian Security Service's Border Directorate for the Bryansk region jointly with units of the Russian Armed Forces and National Guard Service thwarted an attempt to violate the state border in the Klamovsky district by a sabotage and reconnaissance group, the Federal Security Service Public Relations Center said. For saboteurs were eliminated in a clash, other members of the retreating group were struck by artillery and sustained losses, it added. According to the Federal Security Service, the killed militants were presumably mercenaries. Foreign armament, gear, communications equipment and personal items evidencing that they belonged to third countries, a Canadian flag, a prayer book in Polish, a notebook with tactical training notes in English, were found on the eliminated saboteurs, it said. A tattoo of the 2nd Battalion of the 75th Ranger Regiment from the U.S. Army Special Operations Reconnaissance Regiment was found on the body of one of the eliminated saboteurs, it said. Bryansk Region's governor, Alexander Bogomaz, said on October 27 that an armed group attempted to cross Russia's border in the Bryansk region. Forces of the Russian Security Service's Border Directorate for the Bryansk region, units of the Russian Army and National Guard Service thwarted an attempt to cross the state border by an armed group, he wrote on his Telegram channel, adding that, the enemy was eliminated. The mercenaries that Russia neutralized in its Bryansk region include U.S., Polish and Canadian nationals, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova told. According to law enforcement agencies, the mercenaries that were neutralized in the Bryansk region include U.S., Polish and Canadian nationals. These data are preliminary and will be updated, she said.